Here's a graphical description of a computer that's talking to a web server. So this web server happens to have some ports that are in use by services on that server. One is a UDP port 53, and you'll notice as I write these, you're going to see the type of protocol, TCP or UDP, a slash, and then the protocol that's in use. It's a very common way to write those out in the industry. So UDP port 53, it's running DNS on this server, so that, that is open. There's a TCP port 80 that's open on this server. There's also TCP port 443 open on this web server. So there's a few services available. What I'm going to do on my computer is bring up a browser screen and I want to connect to that web server, I type in the name or the IP address of that web server and hit enter, my client decides that the TCP port that I should be using to communicate to that server is TCP port 1331. This is an a, a ephemeral port. It's one that is temporary. And so it's one that my client just used for the purposes of this communication. And it, my machine says, let's go out to that IP address on TCP port 80 and communicate back and forth. And when that machine, this web server, receives that packet, it knows to communicate back with me. It's going to use my IP address and this TCP port number of 1331 to communicate back and forth. And so for the duration of this communication, I'm using those two port numbers with those two IP addresses to complete the circuit so that I can communicate back and forth. Once that session is over, my machine might choose a completely different port number to communicate back to that web server if I need to, and the process just happens again and again and again. Okay, are you ready for the memorization part? Here we go. Let's start with these TCP ports. I've got a big list to go through. The first one is FTP. That stands for File Transfer Protocol. It uses two ports. It uses TCP port 20 for data and TCP port 21 for the control information going back and forth. Another port number is TCP port 22. That's used by something called SSH, which stands for Secure Shell. So if you're connecting to a remote device via a console and you're typing in commands, you're often using SSH to do that. Another program to connect to remote consoles, this one is not encrypted. SSH is normally an encrypted conversation. Telnet is not encrypted. It uses TCP port 23. SMTP is seen quite often. This is the way that our mail systems transfer mail from site to site, from location to location. It's called Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, and it uses TCP port 25. TCP port 53 is used for DNS, Domain Name Services. And this TCP port is used for zone transfers. So DNS normally uses UDP when we're simply querying things. But if you're ever in a situation where you're transferring the entire zone of information, you'll see that it is using TCP port 53 to make that happen. HTTP, a protocol that we use quite often for our web browsers, is Hypertext Tr Transfer Protocol. It uses TCP port 80. POP3 is Post Office Protocol version 3. That's used often by our mail clients to retrieve mail from our mail servers. It uses TCP port 110. And IMAP4 is a protocol that's used. It's called Internet Message Access Protocol version 4. That's a big name. That uses TCP port 143. And finally, we have HTTPS, which is the secure part of HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. And you'll always see that over TCP port 443. So look at those TCP ports. Those are the ones that are most important to memorize for your Network Plus exam. And we'll probably have some questions on those at the end of this video. Let's step through some UDP ports. There are not as many UDP ports to memorize for the Network Plus exam. But again, this is just a sampling of the port numbers that you'll see out there in the wild. DNS stands for Domain Name Services. We mentioned earlier that DNS can be used for doing zone transfers via TCP. The UDP protocol is what we most often see on a network because that's where people are actually doing the queries. So when you query for yahoo.com, you query for google.com, there is a UDP port 53 packet that goes out with that dom domain name service query inside of it. You'll also see UDP port 67 used quite a bit as machines are turned on and connect to the network. They do a boot P or a DHCP request and conversation out to a DHCP server, and that's using that UDP port 67 to make that happen to the server. Uh, that stands for Bootstrap Protocol and Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Those are the same protocols, sort of an older name and then an updated version. Boot P is what we called it in the past, and DHCP is the newer version. TFTP stands for Trivial File Transfer Protocol. That uses UDP port 69. 
NTP is a network time protocol. This is used by our client machines to be able to update the times and keep synchronized around the world. And that uses UDP port 123. It's good for time. And SNMP is Simple Network Management Protocol. If you are querying network devices to obtain information about their uptime, total amount of throughput, it is a management protocol. And it uses UDP port 161. Well, how well did we do? Do you remember some of those? Let's, let's go through a few of those commonly used TCP and UDP ports. What port is commonly used for SMTP? You can see you're going to need to memorize quite a few of these if you're going to remember that that's Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, and it's using TCP port 25. Let's do another. What port is commonly used for DHCP? DHCP, of course, is our dynamic host configuration protocol. You remember, is it a TCP port? Is it a UDP port? If you recall, it's a UDP port running over port number 67. And last question, what ports are commonly used for FTP? Oh, I'm saying ports here. So if you remember, there were two different ports for our file transfer protocol. They were TCP ports, and they were TCP port 20 for data and TCP port 21 for the control communication. We've now gone through all the ports you need to memorize for your Network Plus certification out of Section 1.2. And now we have this list that we can choose from to keep in mind when we go and sit for that exam. It may ask you what some of those ports are. Fortunately, every single one of those is useful to know just for normal purposes when you start working on networks. So it's a very good example of things that are very useful that you will always end up using in the real world. For many more Network Plus videos, to participate in our message boards and much more, you can visit our website, freenetworkplus.com.